Good morning, everybody. Today we're going to be doing one of these basic uh, beginner style carvings. Uh, this one's going to look like an owl. And all you need for this is one of these one by one pieces of basswood, um, which you can get really cheap on Amazon. I've already cut mine off a little bit using a coping saw. We'll probably have to come back and do that again, but let's go ahead and get started. It's actually going to be very easy. And uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is get a pencil. Obviously you'll need a couple of knives or just one that works too. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and make a couple of lines here. So obviously right here I have the front, this is gonna be the front of the owl coming at this direction. So first thing we do is make a couple of lines. And with any lines you make, you don't really have to worry too much about making sure they're completely um, the same angles and all this different stuff because as you go, you can kind of uh, adjust so this is going to act as the slope of the front of the head and then um, let's go ahead and just do that first so the first thing you want to do is if you have a bigger knife go ahead and grab that one because we're just going to start taking some off here and we're just going to make a slope Do be careful as you do this. You want to always push with this thumb and not put a lot of strong arm into moving it with your uh, preferred hand because if you were to push really hard and you had your finger up here like this, you could easily come up and slice into your finger or even if you don't, just losing control of it like this, um, you can take off more than you intended. So um, if you need to, you can also use this thumb as a kind of a way to uh, kind of like a fulcrum I guess you could say so as you're pushing you can just come back around using your thumb as that pivot point and that works really well too once you get to a certain point we're just taking off smaller amounts and speaking of taking off smaller amounts you do always want to take off just a little at a time uh, if you start the cut too deep and you start taking off too much um, couple of things it's a lot harder to control you'll end up taking off more than you intended to possibly but also sometimes you get to a point like if you started down here and just started pushing through you get to a point where you can't really push anymore and you're pretty much just out of luck you have to start over okay so that's good enough for now and so all we have is just this little slant here and we'll come back and probably clean that up a little bit. You can still see the lines, but that's okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a few more lines here. So as we have it, this is the front, the, basically the forehead um, the, or the top of the head of the owl. And so we're going to have the beak here. Um, so let's go ahead and outline the bottom of the head, essentially. So that's going to look just like a couple of diagonal lines. And if you notice, I said diagonal, I'm not sure why uh, <laughs> these are not diagonal lines. But uh, just again, as you can see, I kind of messed up with the first line, but that's okay. You just kind of just go through it. And uh, a lot of this is going to get taken out anyway. So as you can see, we have, you can kind of visualize here, the uh, side of the head, side of the head, uh, beak in the front. And then the next thing we're going to do is come down just a little bit. And imagine if this is the head, uh, we want to find the center point of the body. So um, let's say the midline of the body will be right around here. So this just gives us a general idea because what we're going to do next is we're going to take another line and I don't know the measurements for this, it doesn't really matter, uh, but basically all you need to do is make just a little diagonal line like that coming down to the very edge and we'll do the same thing here. Very straightforward. Doesn't have to be perfect because as we come back and do this with the uh, knife, we'll just be able to adjust this as we carve. So it doesn't really matter too much. Now we're gonna go ahead and make another line here. So let's say we have uh, this being the midpoint of the body, which you'll see more of what I mean by that. We want to just come down and do the next line. And this is going to act as the bottom of the body as well as the perch that the owl is going to be on. 
So this one we want at a little bit more of an angle. So maybe something like this. Yeah, that's a little too much. Maybe something like this. There we go. So this one's not one we're going to use. Um, but this is all going to get carved away, so it's okay if you make a little mistake like that. Then we come up here. And we're going to do the same kind of line, just like that. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So we kind of have these geometric shapes now, and that's, you'll see what that's gonna look like, but we're basically gonna carve around these shapes, and that's gonna help us out a lot. So we have the basic outline of the front of the owl done. Um, while we're here with the pencil, let's turn it over and look at the back. So just like the front here, we're gonna make two very similar lines. just like that, and uh, that's gonna be the back of the head. And uh, we'll come back to the rest in a second, but for now we can go ahead and put the pencil away and get back to carving. So the first thing is uh, we need to go ahead and uh, make a deep cut that we'll use for the bottom of the head, which we can then do stop cuts up to. So I'll show you what I mean. Basically, we take this line that we made here, line up the knife with it, and again, we're gonna be pushing in with our thumb, not with the hand over here. Uh, use this for support obviously but the more you push in with your hand over your thumb the more risk you run of slipping so we're just making a, a deep push here now line it up rock it over do the same thing on this side and if you want you can kind of lift up push put down push just rock it back and forth in other words Okay, so we have a relatively deep cut there, but we need to go ahead and do a stop cut up to it. So start close, because this cut's still kind of shallow, and just do that. So that's your basic stop cut. Very simple. And then push again, and do the same thing a little bit further back if you want. And we're just going to keep doing that because we need to work our way back to the center line here. So this is going to be eventually the main point that we'll work up towards or work up from. So once again, pushing in. And I'm going to speed this part up a little bit. Okay, and so we've got a pretty good start here. As you can see, the bottom of the head here is cut out. Not too much, but we'll come back and probably add some more slopes to that angle here um, once we kind of work out some of the other stuff. So the next thing to do, might as well flip it over and just go ahead and do the same thing for the very bottom. So the lines we made at the midpoint this is the lines we made here up at the midpoint. These are just for reference um, as we went through because we're not actually gonna be making any cuts here, but we are gonna be making push cuts down here 
for the area that acts as the perch. Just like we did with the head, it's the exact same situation. So once we do that, go in at just a slight angle here, cut out just a little bit at a time. First few are the trickiest because you have to kind of keep pushing through. But again, just take your time with it. Don't try to rush through it because you might end up pushing through and either just slicing through this and all the way out or you might end up um, pushing down on a certain angle here that makes you keep having to work the perch downward, which isn't really what we want. This is a good example. So as you can see, I started the cut here too deep. And so if I were to continue, I would just take out the whole um, area for the stop cut that I made. So if you realize you're starting to do that, no problem, just stop, come up here, and just cut it off, just like that. So you can kind of make those little adjustments on the fly, but just keep going. Okay, so at this point we're right here. Now, <clears throat> to go ahead and finish this up, what we wanna do is keep working our way up like we've been doing, coming down here to the stop of the perch, same thing on this side, and then we're gonna increase the slope of the chest up through here. And then once that's done, we'll come in and make the couple of angled cuts that we had outlined at the beginning. So I'm just gonna keep doing that. Okay, so once we've reached this point, let's go ahead and make the notches. So kind of keeping that in mind, we're gonna go up here, make a deeper cut just on the side. Might as well do the same thing here. And we're just coming around, kind of cutting in just a little bit deeper over here. I don't know if you can tell. And so at this point, you don't wanna come in here at too sharp of an angle. We're gonna cut up like this but we wanna make sure to align the angle initially with where we wanna be up at the top of the head here. So starting shallow and coming up there. So that's pretty much it. And then we can just cut this off. So that's what that looks like. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. And you can always come back and increase that angle if you want, but obviously you can't add wood. So take the angle slow at first and shallow. And we're doing the same thing on the bottom. So that's what we're left with at the end here. The next step is let's go ahead and work on the face. So obviously we have the outline um, pretty much done here. Um, we're gonna come back and do the back side afterwards. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and just add the face details. So as we know, this front part here, this is gonna be the beak. And so we'll make a couple of marks here, one like this. It's 
so that's pretty much what we're left with. And then along the side, and uh, the angle I'm working at here makes it a little bit tricky, but usually I have my forearms resting on the table. There we go, something like that. And do the same thing along the top. There we go. Close enough. So that is pretty much the outline for the face. Now since we'll be adding some detail to the face here, let's go ahead and do the back side of the owl because otherwise we run the risk of damaging it while we're holding it. So let's go ahead and do that. And again, we're just going to make the same slope we did for the front, just on the back. Pretty straightforward. Okay, so at this point we're left with this type of uh, angle here. Ideally you want the top to kind of come to as close to a pointed ridge as you can, but uh, it's not a huge deal if not. It'll just make it a little bit easier to cut when we come to the top of the uh, head here. So Now the next step, I have this bigger knife which I've used for taking out bigger chunks, but I want to switch for this part to a smaller one. It's not 100% necessary to do this, so if you don't have one, that's fine. But when we cut out the beak, this is what I like to use. So the first thing to do is line up your knife with this first mark that we made and just push it in. Just like that, pretty easy. Then we'll line up with this line that we made. And again, just push it in. And you don't want to go too deep here because A, you don't want to start pushing into this part, but also if you start to go in at an angle too much and push in too far, then you'll just have this deep cut that uh, will show up at the end here. So err on the side of caution. As you can see, you can pretty much just pop that chip out at any point. And as you can also see, I'm not quite there yet. So I'll just go ahead and keep going, going at a slight angle here to avoid cutting the body. And if I'm not sure, I can come in from here, peel that up if I need to. But that's how you can make it look a little bit cleaner, just taking it slow as usual. So that side's pretty much good. Do the same thing over here. And that's what we've got so far. And that's pretty much it. So uh, for the beak, at least for now, um, we'll come back to that here in a second if we want. But let's go ahead and carve out the sides here. Now here's the tricky part. As you can see from the angle of the mark here, we could just do a sweep cut here, just come up and just do an angle like this. The problem is when we're this close to the top, um, if you come in and then you try to come out this angle, it will just peel off the top here and we'll just be left with a straight angle. In other words, that won't work here. So what we need to do is make a mark, not a mark, but a cut about halfway through, just cut down into it. And we're essentially gonna do two stop cuts. So the first one is we'll come in from the bottom here and we're still gonna follow the line that we made. But as you can see, it starts to break off like that. And if we did that at the top, we would lose the angle. So that's one. And then we'll come down here, do the same thing. Again, go shallow here, because if you go too deep, too deep, deeper than the stop cut you made, then 
you might lose it. There we go, pretty close. So that's what we're left with. Do the same thing over here, making that cut. And just use your thumb, rest the blade on your thumb and just push with your thumb. Now I could have gone a little deeper there, so let's do that. There we go. And then if you need to clean it up, just make those tiny, tiny little cuts. Huh? And there we go. Now let's go ahead and do the top. We want to do the same exact thing. Pushing down here, make a cut in the middle. Now this one's going to be slightly trickier because we're going against the grain. So I'm just pushing with my thumb only. And I'm going very shallow. I can always come back in and add more here, just like that. And then I'm going to flip it around and do the other side. Go slow again, because if you push too hard, you might slip and take off this other ear. I've done that before. And that's all we were looking for, just that slight angle at the top. All right, it's really starting to take shape now. So let's go ahead. What we want to do is add the eyes and uh, eyebrows, I guess you could call them. So first thing we want to do is just make a line. Now we don't want to make this too close to the top here because as we go in and make the cut for this, if we are too close to the top, this part in between will probably splinter. So. Um, kind of line it up as you can see it kind of goes from the corner here and just out try to do the same thing on this side again not getting too close to the top okay and then we will have two little points here for the eyes very simple now to make the eyebrows what you need to do is come in from the top at an angle. So as you can see, kind of at an angle here. And then we're gonna come in from the bottom also from an angle. And that's a V cut. So don't need to go too deep here, but we're just gonna press in just like that. And that's not a great angle. I guess I'll start from the bottom. Press in, and I'm at an angle here. Not too hard, and we want to go slow because that wood wants to splinter. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing coming from the top. Now, if you hadn't noticed, you really do need a sharp knife for this because the duller it is, the more likely it is to just splinter and break in these very fine cuts. Okay, that's pretty much it for that side. Let's do the other one. Not pushing very hard, going very slowly. Okay, that's pretty much it. Now to add the eyes, all we do is what they call a triangle cut. And all you do is you come in this angle, this angle, and this angle. 
then you can make that as deep or as large as you want. And it just pops up. So very straightforward. And you can make those bigger if you want. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave it like that. Okay. Now let's flip it over because we want to add a couple of wings on the back. So to do that, all we do is come down like this. Very easy. Okay, now we're gonna do the exact same thing we did for the eyebrows pretty much, except we're gonna go a little bit deeper. So, come in at an angle here. Now, again, I'm going deeper, but I'm also going at an angle, and I don't wanna go too deep because if I have to push and pull really hard to move that knife through, then I really do run the risk of slipping. And even though I have this protective glove, I don't want to slip and risk injuring myself, but I also don't want to damage what I've done so far. So that's pretty much that. Very simple. I'll come do the same thing. And again, as you can see, the knife's at an angle here. Same thing. And that's pretty much it. So then the next step is we're gonna add a couple of feet here. And all we do for that is add a few V cuts to the bottom of the perch. And these will kind of give you the impression that there are claws or talons, if you will. resting there. Now comes the fun part. At this point, the owl could be considered done, and that's pretty much it. Um, that is the basic beginner owl. But what you can do is you can come in and add a little bit more detail. So if you wanna make this a little bit more advanced, a little bit more uh, your own, you can come in, soften up these cuts, just like this. Very delicate little cuts here. Make them blend a little bit better. And then you can come in here, take off a little bit of the front of the beak. Take off this angle. already looking a little bit better. We can come in and do the same thing over here. If you want, I'm gonna make a little bit of a deeper cut along the beak here. Make this an angle. Do the same thing down here.
And then I'm gonna add a few more angles like this. Or at least more of a deeper angle, I should say. Okay, and then I like to come in and take off this angle too. A little more sloping back of the head. If you want, you can even take off this corner. All right, and then if you want to come in and make a few more deeper angles here, that's what I like to do. Be careful here if you want to do this because you could easily cut too far and take out the whole beak. Not that I've ever, ever, ever done that before. Okay, last step, we're gonna go ahead and add a few feathers. So to do that, you just wanna come in here, pick a spot, and do a nice little U-shape. Again, go very slow here. I'm using my thumb to put pressure on it, not my hand. I'm just using my hand to rotate. Same thing down here. I'm going slow because if I go fast, it's way too easy to slip here. And even though I'm barely pushing, a little slip goes a long way. All right, and just like that, our little owl is done. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty much the perfect beginner whittling project because um, it teaches you all the basic cuts. Um, it's very simple, but can be um, kind of advanced as you go to make it a little bit more intricate, a little bit more interesting. And uh, it's also the perfect kind of thing to carve out of just about any piece of wood. Uh, once you get a little bit better, you can just find a decent sized stick. Uh, maybe you're out camping or something, knock one of these out and just have a little bit of fun with it. Now be sure to subscribe. We'll be doing quite a few more of these beginner projects and we'll be working up our way to a little bit more advanced stuff. And uh, we hope to see you then.